I'm still not going to vote for it because I'm fine. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. And he got off the train. The bloke behind him put his hand on his shoulder and said, I've listened to the whole thing and I was an undecided. I'm now a yes voter based on what you've just said. So you've convinced me. But the, but the main problem and the main point that, that Gordon was making was people like that basically don't give a fuck. Because no. I'm all right, Jack. It They're is. not hurt. And the trouble is the people who are most hurt are the people who don't vote. Yeah. Or they vote Labour because they've they've always voted Labour, and until you get until you engage those people in actually, it's just what George at Newsnet says. George at Newsnet from Coke Bridge or whatever. I mean, he's a he's a working class bloke. He's not a fucking media middle class numpty. He's a he's straight up and down working class guy. And he said, look, we need to try and engage those people who don't vote because they're the people who, if you say to them. This is what's going to happen to you if you keep going the way the way the British state's going. You stand to find bloody bloody black, you know. But they're the hardest group to get to vote. Right then, gentlemen. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to another edition of the Leaf Noise Up Show, which is our uh, occasional opportunity to have a little political rant about the topics of the day. My guests today are Mr. Phil Attridge, Mr. Alex Grant, and myself, Stuart Lockhead. And the other suspect. Mr. Norris Stewart is lying on the beach at Loretta de Mar. Mm -hmm. Oh, is he? Very good. Wow. Getting driven nuts by his two grandkids. Yeah, there you go then. <laughs> Hello there. Well, let's see. We've been it's quite an exciting week. And today, a lot of fire, a lot of heat was generated overnight by a report that, from the MOD that said that uh, they were, in the event of um, Scottish independence, Faz Lane, the nuclear base on the Clyde. Uh, the UK would ensure that was a sub sovereign part of UK territory and not part of Scotland. So uh, they're going to do a land grab. I don't know whether they're going to invade or what to keep it, but uh, apparently that was the plan. However, Cameron's spokesman, David Cameron's spokesman from the Downing Street this morning, blew that plan out of the water. So it's, it was one of these, somebody flew a flag and mm. see where it went. Uh, what do you think about Faz Lane, Alex? I'm speaking um, when I read that last night and the fact that the Guardian of all parts of the media could actually write an article like that and not that they wrote I, I'm happy they wrote an article like that but write an uncritical article about the whole anti-democratic idea that a Guantanamo Bay type solution was even contemplatable by whatever member of the bloody British apparatchiks in, in Westminster it just you know, where where is there any critical analysis of what's going on in this country? You know, if someone had put that into a novel, you, one would have regarded it as a joke, that a, a suggestion of that sort could be countenance. Well, the Russians did that with Ukraine, didn't they? Um, Sebastopol. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Communist state and and a part of and a, and a colony of the communist state, they say, well, we'll give you your independence if you have this. Fine. People around here don't regard Scotland as a colonial part of the English Empire. I do, but they don't. Mm. But that that statement coming out of the MOD was a perfect example that we're not much different from that. Well, apparently Faz Lane, according to the Guardian, is in a remote part of northwest Scotland. Is that what it said? I forgot. I didn't read that. Not no, very remote from Helensburgh or Greenock. Or Glasgow. But I'm it's only 10 miles for Greenock. I'm actually surprised that you're surprised. You're talking about you're talking about the MOD. You're talking about Whitehall. You're talking about these to use the word, yeah, meaningfully creatures mm -hmm. that have been sitting in there for the last few centuries. Uh, You've heard it from Blair, a Labour minister. I thought I'd alter the Middle East. You know, I'd rearrange the Middle East. I mean, I mean, honestly, what do you think you are? I don't. I mean, sorry, it, it's. No, it's, and it's it's an increasing. They'll uh, bomb you if you don't like well, it. Well, it Lawrence of Arabia? Twice of, of killing people, uh, kept killing people up here if they don't get what they want. No. Uh, and you'll have them queuing up. You'll probably, as historically, you'll probably know, um, they'll probably find a good Scottish regiment to go around and kill you to keep you there as well. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not surprised at anything that they would do down there. The UK, Great Britain, I mean, they still think they're great in an imperial power. It's probably one of the most toxic entities ever on the planet. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm, I'm increasingly of that realisation, Phil. I'm probably... Somewhere behind you in coming to that conclusion. Yeah, well, I come from an Irish background, so we, so we, you know, it through, we, we, we know, know it through death, death, 
death yeah. and death. Yeah, okay. Well, my, my, my grandfather was sent to, to Dublin in 1916, so I, I, you know, I, I have some personal connection with that, but nothing like as good as yours. And I didn't realize how corrupt the British state was. I mean, I, you, when I read this stuff last night, it just brought the whole thing home to me. It is a, a joke. However, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll run for a bit. Um, you could argue, by the way, before we change the subject, if you're, if you're very cynical, if you're very cynical, you could actually say that it was a, it was a highly questionable in terms of who it might irritate in terms of the don't knows, but it was a run out of the flagpole because this is the start of a debate about a negotiation we now recognise we're going to have to have because we actually think there's a very good chance that Scotland will vote yes. So it's, it's the start of the discussion. That's fair enough. Well, it's, it all really leads on to that thing which um, I was, it was in last week's Sunday Herald, where they were having a look at it, and it's the thing that the cyber Brits, that's the no campaign, mm -hmm. were making a joke about this is Project Fear. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what it is. Yeah. When you were talking about Project, that, Project Fear being the unofficial title of the, the no campaign's campaign. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's just the whole thing. I mean, because it's not that people are stupid. I mean, it's that they're ignorant. Um, and, you know, and if you tell it often enough, they must believe it. It's like Lord Fraser of Carmar. I mean, these are a few of the things uh, that claim that independent Scotland, if the other bit of the UK looked a bit, they could bomb Edinburgh and Glasgow Airport. Because, just, you know, because we'd obviously go open borders and we'd obviously be just, as he says, asking to be invaded. And then there would be uh, then well, Michael Gove claimed that an independent Scotland would no longer have a national health service, which is a joke when you see what's happening in England. I mean, where they've lost it, then there's hope, then Theresa May. Passport checks would be issued, you know. Um, oh, I mean, so you wouldn't be allowed to have dual identity. Then there's the... Dual citizenship. Oh, just like that. Oh, enough. and right. this, this is a shock horror. This will have everybody trembling and running around. They'll take the pandas back. Oh, well. The pandas will have to, well, be on way down to Regent's Park. Your mobiles will cost you more. You won't be able to send a letter. Uh, and there's a kind of few questions that went to the Westminster Committee. Will we still be able to get Radio 4? Will it be overnight sleepers to London still be kept on? I mean, all this. And if you keep throwing all this, it's negativity, negativity, negativity. Um, but hopefully, I mean, I don't know if you remember 1988 in um, Chile, when, when uh, Pinochet decided to, yeah, shall we carry on with this dictatorship? And he decided to go for a referendum. Yeah. Um, and it was the opposite way around, no, yes. And uh, the, the no campaign, I mean, um, Gabriel Garcia Bernal played him in, the, in, in a film that was, that was out. The, they brought in this PR guy and... And he had this whole committee, all these communists and everything else, and they wanted to show loads of pictures of dead people and all that, and the Pinochet, and he was going, no, 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 no negativity. You want to show what it's going to be like. It's going to be lovely and beautiful. And he walked. They oh, just walked. Really no negativity. So we, so we stick to the positive campaign, then, eh? Stick to the positive campaign. Salmon at Wimbledon, waving the, the saltire. That, apparently, according to this morning's paper, Cameron wasn't, wasn't happy about that. He didn't, I don't think he noticed at the time. Yeah. He was too excited, and the flying behind, behind him. him. Yeah. Um, I have to say myself, I find the, the idea that it's offensive to wave a Scottish flag to celebrate a Scottish sportsman's um, success. I find that, to take offence about that, I find offensive. Go on, suck your own Oh, I, the Vidkanites really didn't like it, did they? I mean, they just didn't like it. But what I found was actually, he had that long saw tie. Could have built it round now. <laughs> <laughs> around Cameron's neck. Yeah, exactly. But it, you, it, the best picture of the lot, though, was, before that happened, was Cameron in this row, Eck behind him, and Millie Poop. Yeah, Millie Poop right him, further up. Looking yeah. down at him with a face with a skull on it. And somebody actually did a couple of red beams, like, you know... Uh, oh, he wasn't in the Royal Box, middle Milliband. No, he was, but he was three rows behind them. Oh. And whilst the, the, the first two were sitting there smiling, not that they were mm. talking to each other, but they were smiling... Miliband was still on his feet with a skull on his face that would have frozen yogurt, you know. I, yeah. He did, looked very unhappy. Did you see, apparently Murray was given a reception in the garden at uh, number 10 the other day, and uh, Miliband was invited, Clegg was invited, Cameron was there, and Angus Robertson from the SNP was there, and there was a picture of Murray there, and he's in the speech bubble says, ah, you're all fucking cunts. 
<laughs> That's what they had to the speech well, bubble. Um, they're all standing there with their drink yes, in their hands. Yeah, I, really, so. I really couldn't disagree with that. Well, <laughs> I wonder if he said it, eh? Under his no, breath. No, it probably, no, no, it probably no, thinks it. But when you looked at them, I mean, they were all, I mean, oh, all jumping on a bandwagon because that's what they were acc accusing uh, of Sam and Dog. But the most bit was this camera. Look, look, I'm loving it. He's going to be a knight and that, you know, we're going to make uh, him well, a sir and all uh, that. I mean, as I described earlier, the, the best picture for me is, is Andy Murray standing oh. in front of uh, number 10 and the door shut and Cameron comes out rubbing his hands with yeah. Lee. He couldn't, he, I mean, it was a, an interesting revelation of how he was behaving. You know, this is... It, this is one of the few opportunities I've got to walk out this door in front of the assembled press of the world and say something positive they're about so, Great Britain. They're so shallow, really. Oh, you know, I mean, well done, Andy Murray, by the way. We made, uh, well, well done. He made all, Scott, all of Scots proud. Considering he started off quivering under a seat while there was a psychopath running around killing his classmates. Yeah, and you know, m most people don't realise the amount of grief he gets oh, on, yeah. on Twitter about you know, from, from an English audience who hate him. Murray. Aye. It is pretty shocking. We just, uh, we just... Oh, you mean these You're some cyber Brits? Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, well, the things they say about us jocks. It's amazing. Uh, talking about us jocks, the West Lothian question, English Parliament, apparently um, somebody called Mackay <laughs> has produced a report about how they might resolve the West Lothian question. And they've decided that uh, they could even have, apparently if, they, if they, they won't allow anybody other than English MPs to vote on English issues. They might as well just start their own damn parliament. Why, yeah. do they Why don't we just go for a federal, uh, a federal government, that's it, and then you well, have a West you know what the sensible parliament thing, that deals with... The, the sensible thing to do for, would, would be to put an English parliament somewhere like Manchester and try and unite the North. And, and have a federal parliament in London. No, all these antiquated nobbins are all standing there going, we've had a parliament here for so long, and you know, I mean, they're, they're just... Um... Anyway, there's been a report, and um, it's been knocked back, basically. It's, it, it's, a, it's a dilemma they can never quite answer, because if you, um, you'd, you'd have two classes of MPs, English MPs and the rest, and they wouldn't all be able to vote on the same questions. If you couldn't have a cabinet, with um, non-English MPs in it because they wouldn't be able to vote on serious issues in See, Cabinet. You really couldn't have a Welsh or a Scottish Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, they they the cabinet would part. need to be in <clears throat> What, you mean, oh, yeah, well, then you'd actually be in a place that you really are, you just don't realise it. Now, I would like to agree with uh, David Cameron at this point because he said way back at the start, not for the reason I'm about to allude to, that this was a broken Britain. And there is absolutely no question that this is broken Britain. The fact is, there are Scottish, Welsh and Irish MPs, uh, Northern Irish MPs, voting on English-only issues, which is very questionable, as we know the SNP don't do it. Um, not that they ever embarrassed the English doing it the other way for a couple hundred years, but they seem to have forgotten that bit. Once the ball's taken away from them, they get very pissed off. So English, the English in general and English MPs are very pissed off about the fact that that. Other people are voting on English-only issues. Um, they're, they're under threat from UKIP. They're under threat with a Scottish referendum. They've had to make, they were forced to make concessions about devolution, which, you know, I've, I've got to say, unlike Mr. Mr. Lord Robertson, it, it opened Pandora's box. And the, the democratic way to solve all of these questions would be to have a federal Britain. If, if Westminster was in any way democratic, they would solve all this problem. They actually could hold Britain. I actually believe they could hold Britain together, and the majority of people would vote for it if they had a federal system, a, an honest, upfront federal system. Now, whether the Scots would then want to still uh, pursue wars in Iraq and pay for Trident, I think would become. Uh, it would event you'd eventually get to the stage where they'd have to stop doing those things. But they could theoretically hold the United Kingdom together if they were honest and democratic. But we know them not. Yeah. That's a fair point. I must admit, the that's, that's the major thing ability. you would have to do anyway with that, I mean, London, to a certain extent, financially and everything else, would deeply be gutted. Well, but it won't be. The thing it is, won't be, as the long thing, as it's, it's, it's... The thing that's going to happen here is, Boris has already said it, there will be increasing pressure for the South East to gain its independence one way or another. If, even if it means that, that all they're doing is retaining their tax take or whatever it might be. Because the whole of the, the British political debate is 
is focused on the southeast of England. That's why mm. the Labour Party's gone down the yin yang because they're actually trying to appeal to those people because they can't win without appealing to them because of the the totally corrupt voting system we have in the United Kingdom. Fair enough. Now, what about MPs' pay? Apparently, they want to pay themselves seventy-five thousand pounds instead of sixty-six thousand pounds. What do you think about that? Pish. Don't well, need to say no. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's absolutely. I mean, they're in the top ten percent. Top five percent. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The idea that hey, in, the, in, the middle, in the middle of telling people about austerity, they can even contemplate taking any extra money is just a joke. Well, because they think they're, they're another elite. Because when you look at their wage, everything's all oh, right, but they've got to do this. They don't need to pay for their fares or anything else. No. All these things. Well, they're free. <laughs> no, that's well, they're 60... accommodation. And they're even charging for their no, kids' expenses as well. No, that's 65. What, do, what, does, I mean, what, what, does most your, what does most of your money go on? Accommodation, yeah. food, yeah. and travel. And you've only got to look don't, at the don't money. Don't it's pocket money there. The so money these yeah. people have been made in. And don't, don't look at tourists because you expect. And it's always money men that come in as Tories, as businessmen. But look at the last Labour law, new Labour government, 13 years. All they were ended up doing was stuffing their pockets, stuffing them. And you all walked away looking like squirrels. Uh, I mean, you, you had a look at Mandelson, how much he's like made. Big fat cheap. As a squirrel. Huge, oh, that is a squirrel. <laughs> Huge amounts. He was skint in 1997. Had to borrow a bit of money off his mate Jeffrey. Nice buy a house. Know you know. And now, he, now he's looking at he was looking at house at eight think, million right, quid. Let's 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 ask this question. Do you they think they need no? They need a pay cut. Do, actually, do you think they'll vote it through? Of course they will. Why? Well, they're not even suggesting they're going to vote on it, are they? Well, it's just going to be a war. Well, the leaders have just turned around. So that oh oh, there's um, the backwards men are all be, are all screaming and shouting at the back. I, th I think they'll get it. I think. Are you any idea how much it costs to clean a look? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, the problem you've got here is uh, they'll, they'll take it because every single one of the 600 of them, apart from one or two honest apart people. John Mann, who won't, apparently. Yeah, John Mann and Dennis Skinner, and I, you know, I'd hope the SNP people stand up and say the same thing. I haven't had it yet, but, but basically, they all know British public, up yours, because if we all do it, you can't do it to us. Mm. Who are you going to vote for? Right. And everybody knows they work hard. And I mean, it'd be interesting to see what Farage says. If Farage comes out and says, you kept thinking this is a disgrace and we wouldn't take it, then they'll all be in the doo doo because there's enough people who want to vote you kept in England anyway. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. But also, what the, I mean, really, I mean, they are hard done by it. I mean, some of them will have to take more direct ships. Ooh, to get to, indeed. You know? I mean, it's hard enough actually trying to squeeze in the jobs well, to, in Talking of directorships, and I may be preempting what you were about to go into anyway, but one of the things that fascinated me about Miliband's speech was uh, there were some remarkable comments in it, like, well, I don't think MPs should have any other salaries. No, um, 10 grand extra. Well, exactly. And and here we are, the, lead, the, the leader of the the no campaign, Alistair Darling, who's earning a bloody fortune uh, doing other things. Not that he's atypical, by the way, he's, he's fairly normal in that respect. But is Miliband actually yes. saying he would he would go for that? Miliband's said, not thinking about anything. He's sitting and he's in a panic. He's reacting to everything. Well, now, you've got, now we've got to the Miliband topic, which I was about to bring up, which is quite clearly the question of Eric Joyce, Falkirk, Len McCluskey, Kira, forget the, 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 all the characters. Anyway, what we're talking about is the battle between the unions, who actually set up Labour, financed Labour, and Ed Miliband and the Blairites over who has the right to uh, appoint MPs, because basically we're talking about Labour Party members selecting who will sit in a safe seat yeah. to get into Parliament. Now, as far as I can make out, the story is this, that um, McCluskey and a few other uh, union leaders are saying, well, this we want to get a lot more ordinary working class people into Parliament. The current pa Labour Party in Parliament is full of people that have done PPE at oh, Oxford. Yeah, yeah. Politics, philosophy and economics, uh, that's, they're, you know, they're not totally out of touch with the real people. Tell us what you're, what you're looking at. I mean, you're a Labour Party member, Phil. Well, I think it's actually the death knell of the Labour Party, because, I mean, there's a clue in the name, the Labour Party. Uh, and now they're actually on, in the process, because this was a new Labour bit, which was to turn this into uh, a British version of the American Democratic Party, where then they could more openly sit in a wee cabal and carve it all up between them. Um, and unions, yes, they can just give us some money, because, well, I mean, these silly buggers, they haven't got any, nowhere else to give the money. Um, 
The union should actually start they should really start a new getting parking. their act together. They should start um, a new party. Well, they should, yeah, they should start a new, there's no reason why they should start a new party, um, really start vetting people to give, to give money. They should also start educating their, their uh, membership a wee bit more, they appear to be rather ignorant about what's going on. I mean, the, the depth of ignorance of ordinary people in this country about politics is appalling, and that's one of the reasons we're in the state, state we are, compared to a lot of, say, particularly, but that's why they want to go to the Americans. Is it just a symptom? Is it totally ignorant? This, 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 this row inside the Labour Party, is this not just a symptom of the incredible lunch to the right that we've seen in the last ten years in this Oh, country? it's been more than ten years. I mean, it's never been since, um, since Kinnock started it, really, without even realising it in any way. I mean, when you look way. at the, 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 the UKIP, the rise of UKIP, the death of uh, any socialist, the, the removal of any social, socialists inside the Labour Party. Well, it's always been a misnomer, actually, the Labour Party being socialist. I mean, at the best you ever got Social democratic. Labor. Social democratic at the best. A lot of it is embarrassment because we're such a class-conscious, obsessed nation, this, this whole bit. Um, and they'd sooner back away from anything rather than actually stand up and stand up, and stand yeah. up for something. They don't. Tories stand up for their... For their electorate, you could definitely stand up for their electorate. Um, but I'm sorry, but you end up with a bunch of yeah, middle class bourgeois offsprings, and they don't have the news to do it. Yeah, but it's not. I, I agree. I agree with you as to where we've got to, Phil. But I think you need to stand back and examine the reasons why we've got to this. It's the it's the electoral system. It's straightforward. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a problem, it, it's, yeah. it's corrupt. Mm. And yeah, you know, much as I know this, you know, talk about the Liberal Party with huge distaste. The fact is, they were always right. The way the British public vote, voted and the voting system means that the very people uh, who vote Tory and UKIP, who are, as you quite rightly say, honest about, we do this, we do that, any other voice gets lost because they all have to appeal to Middle England and therefore they say, and you know, I don't know Neil Kinnock, I'm sure he's a nice bloke, but he, he decided we'll never win another election unless we actually start to be more like the Tories. He, he was nothing like as bad as Blair. But the fact is, the way the electoral system works, it, it's you're only ever going to win if you're a if you're a blue Tory, yeah. UKIP, or a, a red Tory. We need, we need to go totally in proportional, in and you go. get seats in correct. proportion. In, correct. But to inseparable from that, votes. inseparable from that has been the power of the Murdoch media for the last 30, 40 years in this country yeah. by redefining what is normal mm. in, in 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 discourse. So what is normal is immigrants are all bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the EU is bad. Yeah, yeah, foreign influence. Human rights are bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wars are good. Yeah. Nuclear uh, weapons are good. Nuclear weapons are good. Uh, the poor, the, dis the disabled, yeah. the unfortunates in the society are all scroungers and bad. Correct. I mean, this You're has been redefined. the British Empire over the last this, three or four hundred years. But, but this is this is unfortunately exactly what the, yeah. the Daily Mail pumped this out. The Daily Express pumped this out. The Murdoch Empire pumps this out. Well, the Guardian it. wishes it had the guts to pump it out. <laughs> I think, well, the Guardian is any better. Anyway. No, there's better. nobody. The Guardian and the Independent are just the same as all the rest with a slight. I mean, you're allusion earlier to to Republicans and Democrats. I like the American system is is where, where where we've got to. There is no alternative voice, and without PR, which Blair could have delivered because. He had an agreement with the Liberal Party before he won in '97 that you have a referendum on it. And if he if 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 he had gone in and campaigned for people to vote for it, I think people could have voted for it. And for example, then taking the previous point that one of the two you made, if the if the unions wanted to put up trade union uh, representatives for an election, they'd win some seats. Yeah. And so and you would have some representation in Parliament for all of the people. Well, right now, all we've got is a Parliament that does what the South East of England wants. End of. We, we, ha we had it here uh, until until where well, you. Well, I'd always said that. You ended up with six trots in the parliament. Yeah, well, I was yeah, but then six trots. I thought. It was but, then had, but then, had, yeah, but they only split into two parties. There was a possibility of six separate parties there. You know. Do you know what they're like? No, but the whole point is the system here enable that, and we have it with the Greens. I mean, it it just shows the difference, and it, it wakens people up to you still, politics. But you still got you still got placement with a, a PR. Yeah. Why, system. why take notice of the acolytes get get in? I know, but there's more. There's at least a chance of democracy. You know, what is, but the British public, anybody I've ever spoken to in England about this, basically, they say, oh, we need a strong government. And, 
you know, you'll, you'll end up like Italy. I quite like Italy, by the way. Yeah. But you'll end up like Italy. They keep saying, I, I, if I, when I lived in England for nearly 40 years, every time the question of, of democratic systems PR came up, it was, ooh, we don't want to be like Italy. We need strong government. All right, okay. So you want strong government like Mrs. Thatcher? Aye, that's fine. So take yeah, you just got a back row and then you go, hey, this is nice. You sit down, you have a cup of coffee. Never got a bad cup of coffee there. No. Never got any bad food. No. Weather's good. It's no. terrible, isn't it? And the people look gorgeous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, even old grannies look gorgeous. All right, just head on. Did you know, for what you're saying? No, no, but the city is absolutely. A granny grabber. Yeah. You, you Jurassic to the other Park. Cities, out to the country. It's, it's called a quality of life. Here, right. they're sitting crap, falling over holes in the road, not wanting to spend money and everything. It's like, mm, can't in the cash. Um, I mean, it's... Right, but let, 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 let's, 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 let's round up today's uh, uh, show with a uh, privatisation of Royal Mail. What do you feel about that, Alan? Um, well, uh, as somebody who only worked in the private sector, I, am, I, I personally have a belief that says that there is a place for private sector expertise in what I believe should be public utilities. Now, I haven't philosophically examined the Royal Mail closely enough to, to come to a conclusion as to what's the best way to go. But as far as I can see, it's not, it's not a financial liability. No. This, this is a philosophical thing to... It's an, idea, it's an ideological, it's an ideological position. thing. Let's get rid of it and... And uh, let's grab the money and fill a hole in the, yeah. in the, in the, and, in the and finances. Has, and has the privatisation of a whole load of other things actually been better for the consumer? Well, I doubt no. it. Railways, no. No. Uh, you, energy, uh, no. No. Nothing. Water, um, no. Um, and Scottish water, which is still in public ownership, it delivers better value for money than mm -hmm. English water does um, of any of the companies. BT communications, no, they oh. still had a monopoly. And actually, what's the most, and, and even if you're talking about that, the most popular thing on, on pri private cable is the BBC. Um, you know, all that, you, it's a given. But I, I personally, what I would do, uh, because I suspect, like lots of public utilities and the dealings I've had with them, aren't as good as they could be, but I, I would achieve that by actually bringing in private, ex, uh, private sector expertise, even to the extent of selling off part of it, but at the very least I would maintain a golden share for the government for something that was well, important that's a, enough. That, that, doesn't, that does seem to be one of the weaknesses of the British system, where, where, they, have, where they do privatise state assets, they don't seem to habitually keep a golden share, so that, uh, or 51%, yeah. so that they can yeah. actually no, of influence. no, they're not interested because all they're doing is, as, as we can see, the La Labour Party and Tory Party people, for example, right now, half of them are tied into private health companies because they want to privatise the National Health Service and they're going to get money back in the back pocket for their retirement to do it. Thank you, good night. 37 so Labour they, they were, at, they were right, actually All of interest in private health care. They were yeah. actually getting money in their pockets while they were... Every single new Labour Secretary of State for Health was in the pockets of uh, the private of United, particularly United Health and, yeah. and all the rest. Fire and they, they were, well, well, Mil Milburn, Milburn, Milburn. I know. Yeah. I mean, he was always, always this whole bit. It's all this. They call it modernised, which is privatised. Um, if it's, and that's actually what's caused the problems in the health service now, because they are cutting the money back. But the health service, they're totally demoralised. They have, you can see, it's all well. That whole way they're going around with the whole bit of getting them foundation hospitals. Everything was to set them all up as separate entities where they could all be flogged off. And it's all falling apart. And I say, see, the National Health Service doesn't work. Well, of course it doesn't work. If you keep hitting somebody across the head, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be surprised it won't work. Mr. Um, Mr. Artridge, who, who's that on your T-shirt today? Just tell them to be in public. It should have been the first president of an independent Scotland, John, John McLean. McLean. Yeah. Uh, murdered by the British state. Um, made Clyde Side either. Uh, mm. Oh well, thank Socialist. you. Socialist. Socialist. Thank you very much, Mr. Nutridge, Mr. Grant, for your contributions today, and thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye, fun members.